is happening with religion today? Is it getting more progressive? Is it getting more conservative? Is it relevant anymore? Does anybody really care? You know, in the West of the Western world, in the 20th century, religion began to really decline. It's happening now in the United States. It's obvious within Christianity, but it's not limited to Christianity. People who are Jewish are trying to understand what Jewish identity means today and how to maintain synagogues and congregations. People who are Muslim are trying to get a handle on what it means to immigrate to a place like the United States or to Canada and maintain a Muslim identity, especially through the process of assimilation to a new culture. Today, we see the rise of something called American Buddhism. And Buddhists from around the rest of the world look at American Buddhism and are not quite sure what to make of it because it's so distinct and unique. Something's really changing. How do we understand it? And why is that happening? That's what I want to talk about today. As I do, be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you're notified of future videos. Today, we know within Christianity that of the number of churches that close, twice as many close each year than open. And some people think that's because more people go to large evangelical megachurches. Even large evangelical megachurches are losing adherence and they're closing. The number of people participating in organized religion is dropping more and more. We can think that that's about the scandals that have happened, like the financial scandals, the sexual abuse scandals, the pedophilia, and all the other problems that have come with institutional religion. But I think the real problem is much bigger, or the real context is much bigger. Because as we look at the world at large, we see that there is a great shift taking place. We look at the world of politics and we see that the right and the left are divided and can't speak to each other. And in the United States, we talk about these cultural worlds, wars that are happening. We look and we see that the economy just doesn't make sense to us. The global economy seems to be growing, yet there are threats of recession. We are living with inflation. And bottom line, people can't afford to pay their bills. There's more there are more people who are refugees today than there ever have been. Refugees from war, from violence, from climate change, from so many reasons why people are moving from one part of the world to the other and often finding no place to go to be safe. The world is in turmoil. And in the midst of that turmoil, institutional religion is also in turmoil. In her book, The Great Emergence, which she published about 15 years ago, sociologist and commentator on religion, Phyllis Tickle, talked about what was happening. And she described that throughout history, there have been these axial ages where culture is shifting and changing and religion is shifting and changing along with it. And she talks about it in this book in the context of Christianity, which is where she was embedded. And what she saw was that about every 500 years, there are these shifts. So the first shift happened in the, in the 600s in, when Pope Gregory the Great emerged. At that time, the Roman Empire had failed. The Holy Roman Empire had failed. People in, in Western and Eastern Europe didn't have a sense of cohesion. And Gregory emerged as a cohesive figure who enabled people to come together not only did he impact the life of the church and encourage people to bring their local customs into church, but he had great cultural standing. I mean, the calendar he created is the calendar we use today, the Gregorian calendar. So this was the first real emergence, the first shift, the first axial age. And those axial ages continued every 500 years. 500 years after Gregory was the Eastern and Western schism, where the Eastern Church broke from the Western Church, but it was also the shifting of political power, East and West, the shifting of two cultures, East and West. Later, 500 years, it was the Great Reformation. As Martin Luther hung the 95 Theses on the door of the cathedral, the 95 Statements 
the, about which he was taking issue with the church. And that led to the creation of the church we all inherited with many denominations and, and different theologies. And now we're in a new place. We're in another shift and we're not sure what to make of it. Is it good? Is it bad? It is. It's happening. And it's happening within the context of this much larger global shift. Tickle describes the shift that we're going through in terms of religion, much like being in a great big rummage sale where people come in and pick out the pieces that they value and leave the rest. And I think that's an important image for us because we see the way people relate to religion, that they hang on to certain things today and they leave the rest. But it's gonna be out of that shifting that something new emerges. But the shifting is difficult, it's painful, and it takes time. In every one of these shifts in the past, wars were fought, people disagreed sharply. They were at each other, insisting that their position was right and the other was wrong. And we find that same kind of polarization today. So what do we do? I think we need to embrace the reality that we're in the midst of this transition, and it's a transition that will probably last another hundred years. We won't know how it comes out. But in the meantime, we can hold on to what is important to us to keep ourselves grounded, to keep ourselves rooted into our, in our faith and in our practice and in our outlook for our own well-being. But doing so in a way that doesn't make us rigid so that we're unable to move through the transition as it's happening, so that we're able to respect others in their process of this transition. We're moving to a place where there will be some elements that continue from what has been known in institutional religion, while other things emerge that we can't even imagine yet. And that will be wonderful for the future generations, but we're in the transition piece. So hold on for the ride and take care of yourself through your spiritual practice and your network with others. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, Just leave me some comments, and know that I appreciate your time that you spend with Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a really great day.